Howdy, this is Mackenzie Franklin from Side Game LLC here in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and today I'm bringing you my top 10 2021 board games that we missed. So these are games that are either caught in pre-orders or just we haven't gotten around to playing, and we're going to kind of explain why here, but just in general, we're excited for these games, and I want to play them and see if they're going to be a good fit for our library. Now that being said, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please make sure that you do. It is the best way to help us grow, but if you already are, thank you so much. We would not be here without you. I just really want to put out that appreciation. But that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the list. So first off is Descent Legends of the Dark. This is a 2021 release, as all of these games will be, but this one in particular is an app-based game by Fantasy Flight in the Terranoth universe. It's the same universe that things like Legacy of Dragonhold are in, which is already fantastic. I love that fantasy world, but this is app-driven. It's going to be like Mansions of Madness and the Imperial Assault app, where it's going to be running a lot of the AI and the systems for you, which is honestly the biggest reason that I'm apprehensive for it. I'm not a huge fan of app integration in games, especially when that's kind of where your main focus and bookkeeping is because it's something you're consistently referencing. But this is one that I really want to make sure that I give a try because if it is awesome, if it does work, I would love to get this one for the library, but I got to make sure it's a good fit. So a little apprehensive about this, but I do want to definitely give it a try, which is why I'm pretty upset that I was missed it this year. So looking for an opportunity to play this, see how it goes. I love the artwork. I love the style. The 3D terrain just looks like a blast, and the presentation is fantastic. So excited to give this one a try. That is number 10 for Descent Legends of the Dark. Number nine is going to go to the game Furnace, a very unique auction game, which I find extremely fascinating. Been recommended to me by all sorts of people, including my friend Dan over at Chairman of the Board, and he has presented to this with a really interesting auction mechanism as its lead, and I really like this idea. The whole thing is that you are trying to win these specific engines, and then if you lose, you get some bonus if you lose. And I think that's a really cool concept because the severity of your loss determines the strength of the bonus you get. And I think that's a really cool concept and something that's going to really push you to be even, even more considerate with your auction values. So I love this idea, and it's one that I want to give a try. That's my number nine, Furnace. My number eight goes to the cooperative game Unsettled by Orange Nebula. This looks like it's a fantastic production, and if it has anything to do with the care and passion to the world of Indication, I can only see this one being very impressive. Now, the reason I haven't tried this is a friend of mine has a copy, so looking forward to trying theirs before we make our investment into it, but it looks fantastic. I love the idea of combatless space exploration where the focus is on the mission and the interaction with the world. I hear the writing is incredible, so this is one that I really want to try soon and dive into. The art is fantastic. The plug and play nature of the planets that you're exploring sounds really fun, so that's my number eight, Unsettled. My number seven is going to the game Cubitos, a racing game that uses dice. And just like games like Quacks of Quedlinburg, at the start of the game, you're going to be randomizing the abilities of these dice based on these cards that show up. So each game, the dice are going to have different powers. They're going to mix and match for all sorts of fun experiences. So this is by John D. Clare. He's made some fantastic games, some hits, some misses for me in particular. But I really like things like Space Base, and I'm very excited for Dead Reckoning. And I hope that this one impresses as well. I love this idea of using the these dice for this racing game, building up your pool, and then being able to use those effects all over this place. So super excited for that. That's number seven, Cubitos. Number six is going to go to the game Maglev Metro, a pickup and deliver game based in the subway. And I think this is super fantastic. So first off, the theme is really cool. I love these transparent tiles they're going to be putting onto the boards to make connections. And I, my favorite thing that I've heard about this game is that you can upgrade your abilities as you play by picking up these people and delivering them. That's kind of the whole idea. Now, the thing that I'm curious about is, hey, is this actually going to be something where you can choose multiple routes, or are you going to be gravitating towards the same ones based on the map that you're playing? But that being said, there are some new maps that are already announced for this game, which means it's getting support, which means that it is well-loved, so it makes me even more excited to give it a try. So, looking forward to this, love this idea, love this style, and I love the personalized customization, things that really impress me in games. So that's number six, Maglev Metro. My number five is going to the game Mobile Markets. This is a smartphone ink game, and that's honestly the biggest draw here, taking the idea of smartphone, of producing phones and matching those things to customers and abstracting that into a card game. Super excited. It sounds smooth. It sounds clean. It sounds like it's as streamlined as the original smartphone ink, and the presentation is fantastic. I love that they're putting a big emphasis on the people as well instead of just the world, and that's something that I'm very excited for. It looks like something that's a little bit more personable while 
while also being a bit more streamlined and straightforward, but still employing the mechanisms that I was fond of in the original game with the tablet action selection system. So super excited to try this one. I hear the solo is also really good for this one. That's number five, Mobile Markets Smartphone Inc. game. Number four is going to the game After the Empire. And this is one that we actually have on pre-order. Uh, we went into the second printing of it because we didn't get a chance to get it the first time. This is a siege style worker placement game where you're going to be creating these large castles in front of you and you're going to basically be fortifying them to try to make sure you're not being taken out by the enemies. So this has a vibe from a lot of these tower defense style games, but I hear that the resources and the spaces on the worker placement are extremely tight, which I think makes for a very exciting game, especially when it's all about risk management. So super excited to try this one. I love the component quality and the deluxe resources are really fun how they still retain the square shapes. So they're going to be fitting into all of the different castles well. So super excited to try this one. That's number four after the Empire. Number three goes to the engine building game Arc Nova. This is coming to us from Capstone Games. We have it pre-ordered through them and just excited for when it shows up. Now this one here is you're creating a zoo. How cool is that? And in this zoo you are doing your best to put on exhibits and eventually release animals into the wild which is really neat. You're giving up your exhibits for additional point scoring methods and I think that's really fantastic. I don't know a lot about this game outside of that other than that it's an engine builder that borrows a lot of mechanisms from pre-existing games but does it extremely well and I think that's super enticing. I love things that refine and just improve pre-existing systems and it sounds like this one does it with a fantastic theme on top. I love this style of card management, this card evaluation and I can't wait to see it in fruition here. So that's my number three Arc Nova. Whew, super excited for that one. Number two goes to Summoner Wars Second Edition, a redone version of the original Summoner Wars. And my goodness, does the theming of this game sound incredible? And the feedback that I've heard from it is amazing. So you are two mages going around this giant field, and your cards are your units, your spells, your everything, and you're going to be placing them onto the board strategically. Think something like chess, right? But you're summoning pieces, summoning characters that move around. So, so cool. I've played the original Summoner Wars once, but I hardly remember it. But I just remember how fun it was to be able to pick and choose the spells that you see fit, summon them onto the board, and to do your best to maneuver and interact with these elements. Now, the reason that this one didn't get played was, honestly, that two-player spot is in super high contention, particularly when it comes to the skirmish style. And so I got to make sure that a game is absolutely incredible if it's going to fill that niche. So right now, I'm seriously considering giving this one a pickup and giving it a try because it is readily available but that two-player slot is so challenging to get played. So I want to make sure that I try it first because I want to make sure that this is the game that's, ooh, this is going to be the one that I go to all the time. So super excited to give this one a try. Love the themings, love the factions, and I can see myself getting lost and getting all of the different faction packs as they're released. So super excited to try this one. Love the artwork, love the direction they've gone with this. That's number two, Summoner Wars 2nd Edition. And lastly, number one is Vagrant Song. So Right now, Weird Miniatures Games has been sending emails to all the people pre-ordering saying, hey, this is where it's at. You're going to have to wait a little bit longer. And that's what we're doing. We are waiting. And I got to say, this game looks absolutely stunning. The art design is so much fun. It reminds me of things like Townsfolk Tussle. This is very unique style of artwork. It uses these really cool plastic standees to play a boss battling game. And that's so fantastic. You've been going from room to room, from train car to train car on a train as you're trying to calm the speed spirits of these unresting souls and this just sounds fantastic it employs a bag action selection mechanism where you're going to be pulling things from the bag and that's going to determine how the ai works but also the actions you can take and just the whole theme of putting souls to rest in a campaign style this sounds so wonderful i love how interesting this game looks the theming is really cool and i hear the writing is fantastic this is one that i cannot wait to dive into oh i'm, I'm thrilled i cannot wait until this one finally gets here. So that is Vagrant Song, my number one. And those are the top 10 2021 board games that we missed. Oh, I'm so excited to try these. I cannot wait until they show up and I can't wait until I get an opportunity to play the ones that are not on their way currently. So lots of games that I'm super excited to still play, but obviously there's a lot of stuff that I missed from 2021. Are there any games that you missed that you are still excited to give a try from 2021 releases? I'm curious to hear what you think, but thank you so much for watching Side Game Strong.